and could uh, could it, it seems you can't see them but could we just ask no, if I, colleagues can see them yes uh, could, could colleagues please tell us on the chat function whether you are able to see the slides or not okay so uh, manishka at least says yes uh, okay so we have at least a couple of colleagues who can see okay so say several colleagues say uh, from vietnam from cambodia they say that we can see the slides okay good so but, but so then you can't can, you you yourself cannot i myself cannot but uh, uh, i think we can get over that and i can tell you what slide to to be and you can you can shift okay is that okay yes that's fine okay so so uh, now we're on slide number 4 which is on the introduction and uh, we will we'll skip to slide 6 directly and <clears throat> the <clears throat> Uh, you see uh, in front of you the, the SWA framework, which is now quite uh, well known, hopefully. And uh, we see that the data, information, knowledge, and evidence occupy uh, a certain place uh, amongst all the, the the different elements. So, from in the guiding principles, for example, you have evidence-based decision making. In the collaborative behaviors, you have uh, to use one information and accountability platform. And <clears throat> in the building blocks, you have planning monitoring and review and so uh, management information systems for wash are important uh, and on the next slide we see uh, some examples of their importance so uh, it, it 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 comes across uh, several uh, conversations that that data information and knowledge are a major gap in the wash sector and that uh, at the same time uh, right, the right data which is converted into relevant information and then applied as knowledge Uh, are critical for good decision making. So we know that they're, they're required for decision making at the local levels and at the technical levels, but also at the political levels. For example, for the heads of state to support wash programs, or for the ministries of finance to commit to funding, uh, or for for non-wash ministries to integrate wash into their programs. So uh, one illustration of this of this importance. Uh, comes from something uh, the, that you're all aware of recently, uh, which is inequalities, uh, which have been a major focus over this over this past uh, year at least. And uh, on slide number eight, uh, we see an illustration. So uh, this comes from uh, our analysis of of the 42 country briefs that were shared with us before the sector ministers meeting. So. Uh, we see that what what the questions that the briefs tried to answer were do inequalities exist if so why do they exist uh, what solutions uh, could tackle this and what are the commitments to implement the solutions so uh, all, almost all the countries uh, uh, said that inequalities do exist and that they are a major problem and uh, what is interesting and relevant for us is to note that uh, one of the actually the most common reason given for the existence of inequalities for the persistence of inequalities was uh, the lack of quality data on inequalities so uh, we see on the map the countries that said that data are a problem when it comes to understanding and addressing inequalities so uh, the lack of quality data hampers uh, good planning and <clears throat> which leads to persistent inequalities and so Uh, we see that uh, data and knowledge and information are uh, quite important. Now, on the next slide, uh, we see on slide number nine, we see what uh, what a management information system is, because there is a certain amount of uh, interchangeability sometimes or confusion on the different terms that are used. But uh, basically, a management information system is a system that is used to coordinate. Uh, control, analyze, visualize, and use the information in an organization. So we see that there is a question of coordination here. There is analysis, there is access, and there is use. Now, uh, from a uh, from a se semantic point of view, I think we will see that uh, there is a difference between data, information, knowledge, and uh, the wisdom that comes with it. So, the data are the basic elements uh, which are Uh, stored, organized, and accessed in the form of information, and uh, 
the analysis of this information uh, and the dissemination leads to uh, a corpus of knowledge and then uh, which which leads to evidence based decision making and now uh, over time this knowledge is uh, is then uh, is then mutates into uh, wisdom which is uh, which helps in making future decisions based on uh, past experiences and evidence now uh, we need a a strong information system for the sector and i'm, I'm uh, sure we'd all agree and that is the reason we're all here and on the next slide which is number 10 we see the different steps that are required in making a robust management information system so uh, this is uh, uh, inspired by the health sector and uh, I I've myself have had experience in the health sector over, over uh, several years, but uh, the health sector has been making uh, greater strides, let's say, than the WASH uh, sector when it comes to uh, sector-wide information uh, systems. And uh, the, in the investments into these systems are now considered <clears throat> as one of the core ways to strengthen the sector. And uh, that, unfortunately, has not always been the case in WASH. But uh, that being so, uh, th there are five steps that need to be taken. Now, uh, one of the steps is to understand the data gaps. So to conduct a, an exercise in mapping data, what data are needed and what data are available. Then uh, there is a need to advocate to stakeholders. So you by to showing them that data are worth investing in. Uh, then there is a need to set standards uh, which is which helps in harmonizing <clears throat> the fragmented uh, data uh, map let's say which is currently the case so this fragmentized this fragmented uh, landscape can be harmonized and the future initiatives uh, and efforts can be guided uh, by complying to a set of standards so these standards basically give us a common language across which the different data uh, systems will communicate. Uh, then uh, there is a need to identify champions uh, who would uh, so first to build their capacity and uh, ideally to have high level representatives within and outside the governments so that there is an ownership of uh, this information system. And uh, finally, there is uh, a need to demonstrate the utility, the, the feasibility and the utility and the return on investment of information systems. Now, uh, the order in which these steps are to be taken will depend on the context in which they are taken. So there, some countries might already have made some uh, progress on, uh, on one of these steps and might be lagging behind on another, but uh, all five of these steps are important. So now with that, I shall move on to the next uh, section, uh, which is on uh, the importance of uh, the, the management information systems in uh, the SWA. And so on slide 12, uh, it, it shows you a map of SWA countries, partners and non-partners. Uh, who uh, have made commitments related to uh, management information systems. So uh, basically, uh, we see that uh, all countries that participate, that prepared for and or participated in the SMM, uh, many, many of these countries uh, have made commitments or plans or uh, have priorities and uh, 15 of these countries at least have commitments related to uh, management uh, to uh, monitoring and evaluation systems for their sector so it could be establishment expansion review strengthening or harmonization so uh, many SWA partner countries going forward are uh, concerned with MIS and at the same time during the sector ministers meeting itself we had several ministers and uh, their technical pers personnel who uh, raised the issue of data and information in the in the in the sector and have requested support and that brings us to uh, 
the last section of this of this common presentation uh, before we go into the specific country presentations and uh, on slide 15 16 and 17 so starting with 15 uh, what we've done is we've put together a list of resources uh, on which you can get more information if you want to uh, understand MIS in WASH, if you want to uh, apply MIS in WASH, and if you want to learn about it from your peers. So on slide 15, we see uh, uh, a set of, this is an entirely non-exhaustive uh, list, obviously, and uh, we see uh, documents that help in uh, understanding information systems for WASH. So we go uh, anywhere from the World Bank, uh, which speaks about unlocking the potential of information communication technology for WASH services, uh, to <coughs> UN Water uh, and their work on the targets and the indicators uh, and the good practices of country monitoring systems, uh, to an upcoming uh, report from WaterAid, which speaks about uh, how to use data for decisions in the WASH sector, and which includes case studies from uh, Sierra Leone, uh, Nicaragua, and from uh, Timor Leste. So this is a again, it's a non-exhaustive, but it's 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 a good starting point. And when we share the slides with you, you will have hyperlinks to each of these documents, which are available. Uh, all of these are available online. Now on slide number sixteen, we see uh, the tools now. Once we have understood uh, the importance and, and the, the, the concepts behind this, uh, there are several tools which are available to us uh, and collections of tools uh, in order to apply, in order to design and implement. So one of them is uh, obviously the SWA tools portal where you have several uh, tools related to this. Uh, then there is also IRC's collection of, uh, uh, of, of tools and of documents. And then there are the uh, webinars hosted by our colleagues from the Rural Water Supply Network. Now, about specific tools, uh, you have WashFit, obviously, uh, but also Rapid Wash, which is a tool for assessing the uh, sustainability of infrastructure in a community. So, <clears throat> now these are the tools. And on the next slide, uh, which will lead us into our uh, country interventions, on the next slide, we have. Uh, uh, at least we have knowledge of at least 20 SWA partner countries that have made uh, significant progress in information systems in WASH and which could serve as learnings for everybody. So we've, li we've listed here these 20 countries. There are obviously others. And uh, uh, again, so this is not, yeah, it's, it's an indicative list of countries. So we're organizing this as a first conversation on information systems uh, which is facilitated by the SWA, and uh, we're encouraging this to be the starting point for more sustained bilateral uh, discussions between countries. Uh, and with that, I shall move into the interventions, and we can see on slide uh, 20 uh, the interventions that are planned. And if you're able to see it, uh, Sitali, uh, what do you see on slide 20? Since I cannot see the slides, I'm sorry. Slide 20 has Vietnam, Cambodia, Kenya. I think we should yes. have Nigeria also added to that. So, so our, our apologies for not having added Nigeria onto this list. In the latest version, I have it. Uh, so we have uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Kenya, and Nigeria who have shared with us their slides. And... Uh, who we shall now call upon one by one in order to to speak to us about their uh, their experiences. Now we uh, we request that you please uh, uh, take six to eight minutes and not longer because we have a fair number of interventions and then we would like to give a, a good amount of time for uh, discussions. So. Uh, and Balvant, maybe before we go to the to to Vietnam or, or Cambodia. Just yeah. to check if there are any questions. I can't see any question in the chat right now um, on your presentation, but I was just wondering if there is any question yes. that might require clarification. Yes, if there are any questions, please. Thank you, Sitali.
so these these slides will be shared with uh, with all of you so that you can uh, go through them in in more detail and if there are no questions then uh, we could uh, maybe invite uh, our colleagues from uh, vietnam dr huong uh, uh, dr kong would you please like to tell us about the web based system for data collection and reporting uh, on sanitation and water quality Dr. Huang, Dr. Kuang. Okay. Yeah, my name is Kuang. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, good afternoon. Thank you for being Thank with you. us. Thank uh, you. And, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. So you have to keep telling us to go to the next slide. I'm sorry. So we're on the title slide, which is number yeah. 20, which is the the title of your presentation: the web-based system for data collection and reporting on sand water quality. So yeah, please. So yeah. So can I can I control the slide? Can I move slide or I have to? If if, if you slide? want to change the slides, uh, do you see on the screen where it says um, take over as presenter? Okay. 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 Yes. So uh, next slide, please. So my name is Cường. Uh, I'm working for the Ministry of Health of Vietnam. So. Um, I'm very happy to share some information about the um, uh, information system uh, that developed uh, last year. So some slide, this slide already share with uh, Cambodia colleagues and SWA colleagues last two months. So I will represent uh, in, uh, our information system again. So as you know, uh, the Ministry of Health uh, for the water sector, water sanitation and hygiene sector. Uh, the Ministry of Health responsible for sanitation, hygiene, and uh, also for water quality. So uh, under our responsibility, so we collect and analyze data by hand. For a long time ago, we collect data by hand and then analyze uh, data by hand also and all the data uh, reported to uh, to to uh, reported by paper so um, therefore we have a lot of difficulty when collecting and reporting by this manner for example uh, we have slowly update or difficult uh, very difficult to searching data in uh, for long time or we have some problem about the, that, um, the quality of data. Some data is unreliable because they, uh, because the data reported by, by hand. We collect, we have system to collect and report data from village level. First one, the village level re, uh, collecting data on sanitation and water quality. And then they report to higher level for some common level. And then reporting to district level, province level, and then national level. So this is, we have a lot of level. So the data, co data collect and report for a long time. When we want to know, to update quickly data, we, we, we could not, could not, could not update data uh, quickly. Uh, so last year, next slide please. Last year we, um, with the support from the World Bank, under uh, national, uh, under the um, result based water, uh, result based uh, program, we already developed a software, web based software, uh, to collect data. We collect data um, by hand and then uh, the tab in input data at common level. And then digit level in uh, and try and they will summarize the data and then report to provincial level, to national level by, by the software. So uh, now, now you can, you can check and you can analyze data by software and then you can export the data very quickly. So I think it is a very good, uh, system for our information management and reporting. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, so what kind of data we collect? We collect data on water quality, 
we also collect data on um, leichin, the coverage of leichin, school leichin, household leichin, and common health center leichin. So uh, when collecting data, we pass some challenge. For example, we don't have any indicator about uh, SDG, SDG number six indicator. This is the sector, uh, what, uh, what the sanitation and hygiene indicator. And sometimes it's not similar with SDG indicator. So the problem is how we can harmonize, how we can in, uh, develop the uh, SDG indicator set, uh, indicator to input and to update to our software system. So it is very important to follow up the progress of SDG achievement uh, by uh, 2030. Next slide, please. So uh, this, uh, this uh, slide shows the function of our software. We collect data and then the data, we have a lot of indicator uh, to collect and then we uh, analyze data by, uh, uh, by statistic uh, system and then we export data to the report and and then all data will be managed uh, at a different level for example common district provincial and national level next slide please so uh, what is the important how we can use uh, the data the data uh, on sanitation, hygiene, and water quality will be exported and reported, reported to our monitor and the government to follow up. We will report to follow up the progress and achievement of sanitation and water quality. And another one, the data will be used to advocate and to mobilize the government resources, for example. We will report uh, uh, the coverage of sanitation, the investment on sanitation in the park to our government, to the decision maker, or to the parliament to, 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 to convince them the uh, situation of sanitation, what the need for sanitation investment. So this is very, very important. So how we can do that? We will use data and then we, we uh, develop some advocacy material, for example, some uh, uh, flyer, soft flyer or soft message or something like that. And then we organize some advocacy meeting to in, and we invite in a decision maker and government official and also someone from Ministry of Finance. And you can show information and convince them to mobilize the resource. So this, so it is very, very important. Uh, or we can share our data to other um, ministry or to other donors, take a holder to, to, to share with them about the progress of sanitation and hygiene progress and how we can uh, combine, how we can mobilize uh, the support from other take holder. And we also, one thing important is we also inform to the local government to show them the situation of local sanitation and hygiene and also water quality. And we mobilize them, mobilize them how they can uh, uh, reap the in, uh, investment or how they can, uh, um, can, can, can um, allocate fund for sanitation and hygiene and also water quality control. So this is uh, how you can use data um, uh, from our software. Thank you. So problem. I, I would like to, uh, to 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 re-emphasize that how how you can uh, collect and report uh, SDG number six indicator in harmonization with uh, what sector indicator? Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pong. Uh, now, uh, maybe uh, before we move on to uh, for questions, maybe we can have our colleagues from uh, Cambodia present, and then uh, we could maybe take questions for both Cambodia and Vietnam together. 
So, uh, Sitali, if you're okay with it, then we can move to the slides uh, of uh, Cambodia. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Deva from Cambodia. So, yeah. yeah. Good Thank you for joining us. Yeah. So, maybe we can start now. So, maybe you can go to the next slide, please. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. It's very interesting. And now uh, I have the opportunity to share uh, the online system in Cambodia. Uh, we, we conducted annually. We start in 2018 and we call it a management information system. And we target uh, 25 provinces across the country, which we get, we get funded by uh, from NGO like leadership, UDPEC, and War Aid, and so on. Yeah. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. And yeah, you can see in, in this, in this slide, it is the key milestone uh, uh, saying about the, the progress that our data uh, gathered. Uh, we start from the training, both at the national level, and then we go through t uh, to the uh, sub-national level. And we have already done uh, in June 2019, and, uh, and now we in the process of collecting data. And our data are collected uh, by our national team uh, at the province, and we give them time from July to October to collect our data. And the data uh, uh, will be entry into our system uh, through Google Spreadsheet that we are now using for uh, collecting the data. And during this time, we, we are going to discuss about the web application design for uh, launching, uh, hopefully to, to get it launched uh, in early 2020. And yeah, and more importantly, we, we are going to embed in, in our ministry website as well for storing or entry the data that collected from the 25 provinces. Uh, our data will be consolidated from uh, the 25 province, uh, automatically consolidated by the Google spreadsheet that we are using now, and will be analyzed by Python table. Uh, we also have a validation step uh, stage that uh, we have to verify with the NPO record as well as go to the site visit to verify the data, and then. We have we will have the reflection workshop during uh, in December to talk about the challenges to to uh, to get more information about uh, how the data collected. Yeah. So can you go to next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, here is the tool that. Uh, sorry, go back, please. The slide. Yeah. No. Uh, not, yes, yeah. that, that that question. Too. Yes, the we use uh, the template in Excel. We use Excel as the template for uh, the data collection. And we, uh, as we know that in phase one, we told we, we told you that we have indicator, and now in phase two, we 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 capture more indicators. There are 34 indicators that were, and uh, among that, there are 32 from our national action plan. Uh, and it equals 50% of national action plan too, and uh, and quick indicator are national as well. And two about sanitation and water coverage and the improved water source indicator. Uh, in addition, uh, these two uh, we use in uh, phase one. We we prefer to use uh, Excel based, and and this time uh, we use Excel with the Google spreadsheet for for the calculation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can can you go to next slide? Uh, yes, as you know that MIS that can uh, from the data that we collected, it can generate information, it can generate the knowledge from the template in Excel. We got the uh, uh, data from the 25 province, and then we analyze based on the uh, pivot table, and then uh, the final product that we get is the Excel dashboard. The dashboard that we have created, uh, 
it's like the summary of the report, the summary of data that we collected. It has the figure in table and uh, graph and in map in that represent the uh, the data in the 25 five province and with the quick indicator that, that we use in phase one. Yeah. Yeah, can you go to the next slide please? Yes, and what we have just achieved recently uh, are that we have already finalized and endorsed our essay for report. And now our essay two is underway and we have just done the training both at national and subnational level. And now we are collecting the data, waiting for uh, the subnational level uh, submit the, the, the data collected. And uh, we also received a challenge fund from uh, the UDF regional office yeah, for the PM product, a uh, knowledge management product initiative in, in May. Yes, it's a good opportunity to have more fun for uh, supporting the uh, this project to go on. Yeah. Please go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so based on what we have uh, done in phase one, we, uh, we experienced that we, we need to establish an MIF committee. Uh, we have been successful based on uh, we have the uh, committee uh, clearly, precisely. Uh, we have management team, we have working group both at national and national level, and we get support, much support from the NGO, like UNICEF, like World Aid, so on. And they both help us in uh, data analysis in uh, creating the template. It's very important for rural world sector that the MIS can effectively collect and monitor and evaluate activity uh, undertaken in the sector. And we, yes, in phase one, we get the quick indicator uh, based on the consensus. Yeah, we, we have three at village level and two at commune level and one at district level. And uh, we have some rec recommendations from the um, phase one. We, we have to, we have to uh, provide a clear orientation. Yeah, better to have a clear orientation for uh, data management and collecting, and better to have a clear definition for of the each indicator. Make sure that uh, the data collector and the data entry uh, understand of all the indicator that we gave them to collect. And we also need to have a clearer guidance on how to report uh, commune budget for work because uh, in Cambodia um, the work budget mostly. Uh, mostly about the social service budget, not uh, precisely uh, uh, for the uh, for sanitation or uh, water. It, it's only a little bit for uh, water budget from the social service. And more importantly, uh, we also encourage local NGO and the relevant stakeholder in PWG. We have a provincial working group that to support uh, the our as well. Uh, another another thing is that the Spreading Provincial Department of Rural Development. It is our channel of reporting and collecting the data because PDOD uh, is providing them providing the capacity on Intel especially. And another thing is identify and use a mechanism to motivate our as team especially subnational level for an annual PAP progress review. Yeah. Uh, yes, please go to next slide, please. Yes, so what we learned from our um, system that we conduct for two years, for until phase two, uh, we know that the important role of the NGO and DP that support our government-led system. They play a very important role in providing large technical support and the financial support, and uh, especially to refine the template, check, and analyze data. Uh, we have a diverse group member that uh, were, that having variety skill, diverse skill that gives a very uh, deep experience and ideas to uh, have a collective idea for the MIS. 
And another thing is the collective action that we need focal point, especially from the uh, department itself and from NGO as well, that we need focal point for a number of activity to ensure consistency of knowledge and avoid delay to action. Yes, and we also compromise each other and uh, co collaborative to uh, to the opinion the mass stakeholder. Yes. So go to the next slide, please. Yes, the next step that, that uh, we are going to, to do is uh, data collection and entry at the sub national level and we follow up by each na national team and phase two will be further uh, by submitting and automatically consolidate the data online uh, through the Google spreadsheet. And I'm already also intend to engage a Chromia consultant to develop a simple web portal that uh, after the same tool, the MIS can be embedded into a more um, um, website, our ministry website. And uh, although we have a concern about uh, reliance complexity, about technical, about its uh, expense, and consultant dependent, no way as well. But uh, hopefully, that we can develop a web based although it needs uh, more technical or more finance. Uh, next step, we go into produce and printing report phase one and phase two. Uh, phase one report is now printing and um, will be shared during uh, our national presentation day. And the design for report phase two will be just like a phase sheet. And we will have our MIS Facebook and website and will be designed with the communication team as well. Um, we will prepare the have a meeting for preparation meeting for the uh, let me call that we call K M I S. It is um, relating to you know, knowledge management, and there will be an annual reflection report in December. Yeah, yeah. That's all for my presentation, and welcome for the, the question. Yeah, thank you. Excellent, uh, Ms. Deva. Thank you very much uh, for for sharing this. Uh, uh, this experience from Cambodia. Uh, just so our colleagues elsewhere uh, know, uh, there was a a workshop, uh, a well attended workshop on uh, MIS in Cambodia, and during this workshop, uh, the, our colleagues from Vietnam shared their experience with uh, our colleagues uh, from from Cambodia, and uh, we at the SW Secretariat were also a part of that conversation. So uh, thank you. To both uh, Vietnam and to, to Cambodia for uh, for having shared their experiences with us. Now uh, we'll uh, we'll field a couple of questions. Uh, I see that there is at least one uh, question that has already been uh, asked on the chat function. Uh, if there are any other questions, then uh, we can also go for those. And then we shall come to the experiences from our, our colleagues in the two Africa countries, uh, Nigeria and Kenya. So there is a uh, question for Cambodia and for Vietnam, uh, which is, uh, it's actually a double question. One is, uh, what is the re human resource and financial implication of implementing the MIS? That's one. And second, uh, have you been able to get commitments from national budgets for the systems to be sustainably financed? So uh, it's a double question. One part of it is about uh, what are the costs involved in, in your MIS? And the second is, do you have commitments from public funding in order to finance uh, the MIS sustainably? So if our colleagues from, uh, from Cambodia would like to go first, then uh, I would invite them to answer this question and then to our, our colleague from uh, Vietnam, please. Okay, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, yes, let me answer the question. Uh, to sustainable the, the MIS, uh, until now we got support from mostly from the NGO. Uh, yes, but in the next year, hopefully, uh, because now our management team are, uh, are discussing about uh, getting MIS into the budget, into the state budget. and. Uh, that's why Cambodians prefer to start from the simple and low technical, low technical and technology to have the MIS uh, to to be uh, going. We have 
a very simple that we don't need to have much finance or budget. We start with the uh, Excel base. So we, like in phase one, we spend only around 20,000 something. Yeah. So, and we, we, we collect the, the, the data only based on the indicator in national action plan and based on con consensus. And for the human resource, we, we normally uh, focus on capacity building. We provide training to our national team uh, to make sure they can uh, provide, they understand about uh, the data collection about the data entry and then can provide the uh, technical support to the subnational level. So we have, yes, like you, you, you have seen in the key milestone, we, the MS start first from the uh, training at both subnational and, and uh, national level. Yes, it's phase one and anti phase two. And we, we may uh, uh, continue this action in phase three as well, if we update into uh, our our MIS into web base or something like that, yeah. And um, for financial communication, yes, because right now we uh, base mainly on the budget from NGO, but we still keep doing moving forward uh, based on the resource we have. So. Uh, we have uh, now we we have team we established team we have a working group and we ensure that our working group can do the job well and then uh, our our subnational team also commit to collect our data because indicator that in national uh, also in the uh, they are PEP provincial action plan so uh, they they must to collect the data for that. Uh, yeah, I think it should be enough for me. Yes, thank you very much. Just uh, if if I may add uh, something that I learned from Cambodia's uh, from the workshop, it was also that uh, that you it is one of the two priorities that was identified during the sector ministers meeting, uh, and that it is uh, that is going to help uh, give it more importance. Uh, and it it might uh, hopefully lead to uh, to more in terms of budgets, but also uh, this this approach of starting small because of uh, limited resources and then uh, getting big. Uh, it is also that you are trying to align uh, the MIS in in order to include as many indicators from the second phase of the national action plan. So the the, the progressive uh, scale up of the MIS uh, is is something that that uh, we we got a chance to learn about uh, during during your workshop. So uh, thank you very much, our colleagues from uh, Cambodia. Uh, now the same uh, double question <coughs> to our colleagues from uh, Vietnam. So uh, what are the financial implications? And uh, then do you have uh, provisions for uh, funding this MIS through public funds? Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kong, please. Thank you for question. So uh, for the first question, uh, we uh, the human resource and finance uh, financial implication for our system. We uh, we have, uh, in order to collect data and report data, we are the health staff health staff at uh, at village level. We have a um, uh, health motivator. The health motivator will collect data and then they report to the health staff at common and district and provincial level. So we have system and health staff to collect and to report the data. And we don't have to pay any money for the work. They, they already paid by salary. So this is uh, the work, um, normal work they have to do. So we, 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 we don't need to pay any more for the work. Um, in order to, for the second question, uh, in order to maintain and to operate our system, uh, in the short term, we use uh, the fund from the one mine loans because uh, our software developed under the uh, result-based program 
funded from the World Bank. So in the short term, we uh, allocate a fund from uh, World Bank loan to operate and to maintain the system. But for the long term, for the uh, future, maybe we need to get uh, the commitment uh, from our ministry to allocate the fund to operate and to maintain our system. Thank you. Well, excellent. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kong, for the for the clear and, and concise answer. If we have no other questions in uh, right away, then uh, I would like to invite uh, our colleagues from Nigeria to please uh, speak about their experience in management information systems. Uh, so I think the slides are now on. Sitali, are they? Yes, we have Nigeria on. Okay, super. Thank you very much. So, uh, our colleagues from Nigeria, please. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Uh, good, morning. Okay. good morning. We can okay. hear you. you. Yeah, this is Yemi C um, from the Ministry of Water Resources in Nigeria, and I'm here with my colleagues from UNICEF and the Ministry of Education as well. So, we'll be presenting... Um, on the WASH information management system, WASHINS, which is um, the management system that we are using in Nigeria. Um, can I take over as a presenter so that I can move the slides myself? Yes, please. Yes, please. You can do that. Okay. Okay, so the um, in Nigeria, we have the National Framework for Sector Monitoring and Evaluation, which was developed in 2004. And in um, 2011, we uh, established the uh, WASH Information Management System, that's WASHINS, uh, for a coherent and sector-wise user-responsive uh, real-time data collection um, system. And this has been adopted as the main sector uh, monitoring and uh, platform for decision making. And we've been receiving support from UNICEF in this regard. And over the years since 2011 till date, we'll, uh, the washroom has is been scaled up to, um, to um, include uh, additional uh, coverage. Because initially, it was focused on just um, in, where interventions are happening, uh, basically UNICEF interventions. But over the years, we've been scaling that up to include additional communities and LGAs. And the features of the washroom is that it's a web-based uh, uh, um, uh, management information systems, and data are entered on real time at the uh, local government level. So we have from the uh, local government level where the uh, community information is aggregated and then is inputted at that level, and then you can actually view the information in real time. It's also an interface for data entry, it's, so you can send information through your computers or smartphones or SMS platforms, and all these generate informations um, where you can assess them. So currently we have um, 224 local governments across the country that uh, have their data on board the washing platform. In Nigeria, we have 774 local governments, and so far we have um, 224 local governments um, where uh, washing, uh, are, they are using washing, where their information are uploaded on the washing. And out of these, we have 70 local governments that have real-time facility tracking across 21 states. And this um, means that we could actually track their uh, water facilities to check the functionality, if there's any breakdown or all that. These are reported in real time so that um, issues around rehabilitation or um, um, maintenance of these facilities could be done in good time. And um, so you could see the graph where the scale up of washings from inception in 2020, 20, 20, uh, 2012 up to date, where we have uh, up to seven, 72,000 plus communities uh, data on that on the washings and over 200 um, local governments. And uh, a recent um, in, uh, intervention on the washing is using it for procurement. So what we've done is to be able to bring um, 
the information about contractors who put up these facilities on the washing platforms where uh, they are, um, you can engage them. So government is trying to use the washing platform for e-procurement, uh, for procurement as well, where contractors' information and database will be uploaded and they can be assessed in good time. Uh, another um, intervention and uh, initiative on the washing platform is the artificial intelligence for functionality tracking. So this is intended to provide uh, real-time monitoring and reporting on if there's any breakdown or any issue around any water source. Uh, before now, what we've been using is uh, people reporting from the community around breakdowns on their uh, water facilities, but now new um, facilities that have been constructed is being installed with this uh, artificial intelligence tracking that will be able to say whether the the uh, um, facilities are functional or not. And when this report is sent, the we have what we call local area mechanics that have been trained to support communities in repairing and maintaining these facilities. So when in any uh, report of breakdown is recorded and sent through the platform, these local area mechanics are uh, immediately engaged to ensure that these are uh, addressed. So these are pictures showing the installation of this artificial intelligence tracking uh, in boreholes. And this is the dashboard of the washing. So if, um, and this is showing us the, you can, anybody can access it using the, the link. And if on the dashboard you could see, you could assess any information at the national and at uh, disaggregated information also uh, regarding states and regarding um, whether water or sanitation and all that. And um, another thing we've also been able to do in Nigeria is what we call the National Outcome Routine Mapping of Wash Facilities, Wash Norm. And uh, this is a survey that captures um, that captures uh, and is set to track uh, progress of a uh, wash situation over time. It's uh, to be an annual survey that gathers information on sustainability and will be able to give us um, evidence-based information to that we address decision making and resource allocation. And the thematic areas covered in the wash norm uh, survey includes the status of access to wash services in households, uh, wash facilities coverage and functionality, issues around gender and inclusion, quality of service, user participation and uh, satisfaction, as well as uh, sustainability practices. And this uh, wash norm, um, the surveys, um, the parameters that were uh, uh, involved, in, in, we had about 108 parameters on household survey. Then for mapping of water supply facilities, we have uh, 49 parameters that were um, gotten. And then for ed in education facilities, we have 47 parameters. For health centers, we have 38 parameters. And almost a total of uh, 271 parameters were included in the survey. And we hope that this will be a, an annual thing that will be covered, uh, that will be uh, in, uh, done on an annual basis. And with this, we'll be able to have disaggregated data on um, according to literacy, wealth, income, sex, age, disability, um, uh, disaggregated data around urban and rural, peri-urban, and then geo, uh, geopolitical zones across the country. So this, um, and it will also help uh, the country to fulfill the human rights to wash as it relates to women and girls, um, safety, affordability, adequacy, uh, people living in vulnerable situation and um, the rest. Uh, so the first wash norm survey was carried out um, in 20, last year, 2018, and it was launched um, in May this year. And we are hoping to put the report, so the report is actually online on the National Bureau of Statistics website. And we are hoping to have a web hosting where the information on the wash, wash norm will be. So we are hoping to have a, an open dashboard like this where all the information, disaggregated information that the, uh, from the wash norm 
on the website where anybody can access it. And we hope we are looking at having this to inform intervention, uh, intervention and um, and uh, profiling of um, intervention. So if you are to put, um, looking at areas where the needs are, are needed most, we'll be able to decide on what allocation goes to any area, but depending on the access and coverage in such areas. Um, so thank you for listening. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues from uh, Nigeria. Now, uh, before we move on to questions, we, uh, I would like to uh, call on uh, Dr. Khalid Massa from uh, Tanzania, if you would like to share with us a, uh, some, some of Tanzania's experiences, and then we, we would have uh, questions for both of these countries after Dr. Massa's intervention. Dr. Massa, if you're online, please. Uh, Balvant, I think we have a problem with his his audio. So uh, I would uh, say maybe. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so then, uh, while we wait for Dr. Massa to uh, to to come online, uh, which to, uh, Balvant, it oh. might be good to confirm just in case there is somebody from Kenya, uh, in, in case Kefa is using a different line. Of course. Of course. Uh, so. Uh, we had also had uh, the the agreement from uh, Kenya and would also share their slides with us. Uh, if we have any colleagues from uh, the Kenyan government, would you uh, please let us know so that we can give you the floor to speak about your experience? Okay, so uh, I, I think we, we do not have any colleagues from the Kenyan government. Now, uh, wh while we wait uh, uh, for, for eventually for, for them to join, uh, we have a question for uh, for our colleagues from Nigeria. It's actually a, a clubbed question with, uh, with three uh, sub-questions. So first of all, uh, this is a great presentation. So uh, I, I definitely echo that, uh, that opinion. Uh, one question for you is who manages the website? Uh, the second question is, how do you maintain the system? And the third question is, who supports all of the costs? So if our colleagues from Nigeria would be kind enough to, to respond to these questions. Uh, about the management of the website, the, the maintenance of the system, and, this, uh, and the cost, who bears the costs? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, so the, the website is currently being managed uh, with the support of UNICEF. And uh, in the nearest future, we, we uh, the federal government intends to take over that as the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. Um, so the information comes from the community up to the local government level, and then it's where it is inputted into the washing platform. And um, so all the people are trained. So at the community level, we have the wash comms, that's the a wash a committee that are based at the community. These are trained on how to actually get the information to the local government. And then at the local government, we have the M&E officers who have been trained and capacitated to actually uh, input the information on the website. And at the state level, support is provided to the state. So the, the wash units or departments at the state level have the running costs, which is provided by the government. Their salaries are being paid by the government. And the UNICEF also supports where they are having intervention, supports and providing um, and training capacity and all that uh, as the need as the need may requires. And then. Um, so for maintenance of the system, we have people at different levels who have administrative rights to actually cross-check the information that goes on the washing platform. So this, they, they can query any information that feels out of place or all that. So these are the ways where they we try to ensure, to clean up the data and ensure that everything that goes into the system uh, are correct information. And um, 
for support the cost like i said you know there are costs that goes to uh, personnel and all that and for the wash norm um, survey which um, is actually giving us a lot of uh, information and parameters as it relates to um, the sector the unicef is also supported us with the first uh, survey that was held last year and the federal ministry of water resources also contributed in that so it was a joint venture between unicef and the federal uh, government and we hope that that will also continue with other partners coming on board and with the government committing more resources to that thank you excellent uh, thank you thank you very much uh, now i have a quick question balvant Tell me, sit down. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, could you, this is really interesting and um, um, quite a, a, an interesting progression. I know that there are countries that have started and then had difficulties and then stopped and then, um, uh, so there's that cycle of, of, of learning and then um, uh, wanting to continue or not or having to demake the decision again. <laughs> Um, what would you say are some of the challenges that you you have faced in this process? And also it would be good to see from the education sector, as you have a colleague from the Ministry of Education, what for them has this uh, system uh, been useful for? Um, uh, because I think it's good to sort of see an integrated process. I know that I think in Kenya and Ethiopia, they were doing the same previously, or they're still doing that. So it would be good to hear also from uh, education, for example, how have they been able to use this system? Thank you. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. My name is Peters. I'm from the Federal Ministry of Education. Thank you. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. The information on the watch norm has actually helped us to aggregate uh, data as it relates to washing schools. And you know that the the focus of the Ministry of Education is to reduce absenteeism, incre increase the school participation by school children, and then absence of wash facilities or wash services in schools render uh, increases the rate of absenteeism among 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 uh, school children. Uh, more importantly, absence of wash facilities in schools affects especially the vulnerable uh, population, especially girls and women, because whenever they are menstruating, they may not be able to come to school within those days because they will not have that privacy to change their menstrual, menstrual ways as it is. And then when the child misses school for a week, when she comes the next week, definitely she will be able to, she, she will start copying notes and all other things and will not be in tune with the class. So what you see as one week of being absent from school actually translates to around two or three weeks, three weeks in terms of educa educational capabilities. So uh, in the, at the Ministry of Education too, we also have a Nigerian, okay, what I can call NEMIS, uh, National uh, Information Management System as it relates to education. And then at the moment, the the federal minister of water resources the federal minister of water resources has a centralized monitoring and evaluation system which is domiciled in the department of water resources planning and technical support services so the data that we get from here we also aggregate it to the education sector and it has helped us greatly thank you thank you so much thank you that was helpful for me thank you Okay, uh, so th thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Now, uh, if do, do we have any questions more broadly for uh, all all the three uh, countries that presented, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, and uh, and Nigeria? Uh, 
uh, if we do, then uh, you're invited to ask those questions. Otherwise, I had a couple of questions as well, uh, to which I would like to ask to all three countries. But uh, are there any questions from the audience? Excuse me, I, I have one question for Vietnam College. Please. Yeah, I would like to know about how they, they advocate for more but like the budget allocation from the government. You know, especially they said that they also invite the Ministry of Finance to show the data and who organized this and and how how uh, how much budget they mobilize on this uh, system. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So, so if if I've understood the question uh, correctly, then uh, we would like our Vietnam colleagues to tell us about how they manage to obtain more public funding for the MIS. So, uh, Dr. Kong, please. So, I'm sorry, so, so uh, can you speak, uh, can you repeat the question? Yes, so, okay. go ahead. Uh, Okay, please. You know, if you're from Cambodia, we're really interested to learn about how you know the use of my ex to advocate for more money from the government, especially you know from the of finance. You said that you know you you support and you advocate and you know you invite the Ministry of Finance to 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 be part of the system or maybe to show them some of the the wars. And I would like to know how much budget from that uh, exercise or that project you you are now getting from the government. Okay, uh, I, I think I'll repeat the question for you, Dr. Kong. It was about how how, uh, how do you manage in uh, in Vietnam to uh, to obtain more public funding from public budgets for the MIS? Dr. Okay, Kong? so okay, yeah, yeah, it's clear. So uh, in uh, in Vietnam, so for the uh, our MIS, uh, we create it uh, at uh, each level. At each level, we create uh, uh, the account, one account for authorized person, health staff who will manage the accounts, and then just only one people can, authorized people can uh, enter the account, and then they can see everything inside, and then they can analyze data, input data, and then report data. So this is very important. Uh, to avoid some uh, duplicates or some misunderstanding data or something like that. So authorized person who have um, personal account is important. Thank you. Is clear? I think it's because time is okay, I think, but, you know, we really want to know how you advocate, you know, using the MIS for more budget allocation for the war sector. But it's okay because of time. Sorry, could could you could you um could you just say that again? I think we missed it, and I I see that um I think uh, uh, we we missed what you said. Sitali, I uh, I think uh, the question is how is Vietnam using the monitoring information the the monitoring and information system yes. in order to advocate for more funding for the wash sector. All right. Okay. Okay. Doctor Doctor Kuang, you you got that? <clears throat> um, are you using this information system to advocate for more funding in the wash sector? If so, how? Uh, okay. So uh, thank you for the question. So uh, we using the monitoring data uh, to 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 the first one we report to the government, yes. to the minister, and then to report to the government. 
And then uh, with the support from UNICEF, uh, we uh, in uh, last two years, we organized advocacy meeting with the government office and with the parliament. And then we can show some uh, our data. This is occasion, occasion event for example, advocacy meeting. And then we report the data. We uh, show the situation and then we show the uh, fund allocation. We don't have any indicator about the fund allocation, but we can, uh, we can collect, uh, uh, fund allocation, not by soft, this software, by, from, from another source. So we can show everything, uh, to convince the government and the parliament about the uh, fund allocation and then we ask them to pay more concern about the fund allocation. On the other hand, we can organize some other advocacy uh, event. For example, we, um, we, we work with some media, public media, or we develop some uh, advocacy material, like uh, flyer, we develop a soft flyer, and then we, we can show in some specific meeting uh, with some uh, of a government officer who will be attend. So we can, we can find any advocacy meeting or uh, event to, 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 to explain about the uh, sanitation and hygiene and water or something like that to, to, and uh, to mobilize the resource. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. So, so, so that, that's a very interesting. So you use this in um, discussions with parliament, also with the ministries, and also in engaging with the media. Um, those were the three things I got. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, th thank you very much uh, to our colleagues from Vietnam. Now, th there was a question that came from our colleagues in Bhutan, uh, and which was addressed to uh, the colleagues in Nigeria. Uh, which was that you said that you have focal persons for wash-ins, the wash IMS. So the question is, how often do you train your focal points in case of the focals getting transferred or when they leave the services? So colleagues in Nigeria, please. Great question. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, so um, from at the community level, we have the wash committees, uh, which usually is a sometimes a 10 or 12 member committee and so any one of them could send so most times they send the information on their community wash access and um, functionality and all that through sms so that does not take anything for them to send to the lga and when it gets to the lga they have the um, M and E officers, which is usually more than one person, could be two or three of them in the department that are responsible for that. And in, in case any one of them is transferred, or, or there will still be another person that will be on ground. And for any new person that comes in to take over, those, that person is also trained to be to um, familiar with the with the platform and know what to do. So um, there has not been any time where there has been a gap. And then um, in most of the UNICEF intervention um, LGAs, there's they also support with uh, a, an LGA facilitator that supports the LGA in different areas. One of them is also uh, regarding the washings. So there are lots of capacity uh, on ground to ensure that um, the informations are gathered at uh, as a need be and they are updated on the uploaded on the platform uh, as well and then um, somebody also asked um, how often do you collect the data and in which format so um, the information comes from the community sometimes by sms sometimes uh, they write and all that but it goes into the so it's uploaded into the the the, the washing is a web-based platform so you impute it and it comes on the web. You can assess it. You can assess it uh, in real time. So that's how uh, they are, that information is collected. And it comes in as as long as there's any new updates from the community. Like if they have a new um, a new water point, they send that information as as the needs arise. So it is a real time um, data. Uh, uh, management system that gets the information in real time.
Bravo. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we, we have Dr. Khalid Massa who is uh, back online and we would, uh, I'd like to give him uh, a few minutes to, to speak about uh, Tanzania's experience and then uh, we'd already be at the one and a half hour mark. So then we would start uh, having to wrap up, please. So uh, Dr. Massa, if you're uh, here, you could speak to us about National Sanitation uh, MIS in, in Tanzania, please. Balvant, I think his audio is still not yet enabled for some reason, but he's posted in the chat really interesting information um, uh, that they are at 92% reporting rate, which is a phenomenon. Um, but I can reach him on phone, so just give me a second, I call him on phone. Uh, if there are no other questions for our colleagues uh, or from our colleagues, uh, then uh, I had one question, which was uh, to all the three countries, uh, and that was about uh, the MIS, the process of the of making the management information system. Uh, how so the design of it, the planning of it, the implementation of it. How have you been able to make it multi-stakeholder? So uh, how have you, how have governments been able to involve other partners? So we know that uh, there, are, in at least one of the three countries, there is uh, the NGOs are, are, uh, are the, the big funding partner. Uh, in one, it's the World Bank. But besides the funding, how have you been able to make uh, make uh, other stakeholders a part of the planning and the design and the implementation of the uh, of the management information system? So uh, maybe if we could go with uh, with the last speaker, uh, Nigeria first, and then uh, to Cambodia, and then to Vietnam, please. Thank you. My colleagues in Nigeria, would you like to answer the question, please? Hello? Yes. Okay, so... Hear. Yeah, so one of the things we've done is, um, so in Nigeria, we have the National Council on Water Resources that is the highest decision and policy-making body in the country, where um, it's chaired by the Ministry of Water Resources at the national level, and all the states, all the 36 states, um, um, water ministry responsible for water and sanitation are also part of that council. And... Um, um, the issue around washings was presented at this meeting um, in 2014, I think, and it was a memo was presented on adopting washings as the national um, wash um, management for the country, and this was approved. And based on this, because also all partners and um, um, NGOs and all that working in the sector are also part of this. And when this was approved, that means every every uh, stakeholder in the sector is expected to key into that using uh, the washing as the reporting platform for the sector. And so beyond this is actually trying to engage with each uh, partner and each um, other, other, other stakeholders bilaterally to ensure that they all actually get their information on the platform. So this is what we've been uh, we have been able to do to ensure that everybody gets on board and uses the washroom as a, a data collection and monitoring platform. Excellent, excellent. Uh, th thank you very much, colleagues from Nigeria, about about uh, aligning uh, all the stakeholders onto this this uh, this single uh, information system. Now, our colleagues from uh, Cambodia and from Vietnam, would you also please like to answer the question about? Uh, how is the the design and the implementation of your information system? Uh, how is it multi-stakeholder? Please, Cambodia. Okay, thank you. From Cambodia, we have also, you know, we, we call the TWT, Technical Working Group, it is the highest level and then chaired by the Ministry, the Minister of Ministry of Rural Development and co-chaired by UNICEF, uh, the lead uh, development partner in the country. So we have particularly uh, quality meeting and involve all the stakeholder and also you know the concern ministry also uh, invited for this meeting as a member of the TWT. And then there we also have we call Water Sun, this water sanitation group is a regular organized monthly meeting. This 
at the technical level, we have all the stakeholder NGO are part of this, and also any issue we can discuss. Among at least one of the topics discussed at, at this meeting, and also we also update to the TWG at the highest level for the endorsement and for the support from the ministry. All right, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. So, so our colleagues in Cambodia have just told us that uh, that they use uh, the existing sector uh, mechanisms in order to uh, to to get all the stakeholders involved in the MIS as well. Thank you. Now, our colleague uh, in Vietnam, would you please like to tell us about how the design and the implementation is being multi-stakeholder? Dr. Kong, please. Thank you for the question. Uh, so in Vietnam, we, um, the Ministry of Health, uh, we are chair for the sanitation working group, and um, this, this is a platform to mobile, uh, to, to get the involvement from many government sector uh, stakeholder, and uh, we, uh, the platform also include um, the donor and other NGO on what sector. And also uh, the sanitation working group uh, platform also includes member from private sector. So we organize the sanitation working group uh, every quarter. And in uh, each sanitation working group meeting, we update on everything about the sanitation and hygiene and water supply, uh, including policy, um, achievement on sanitation, and hygiene and water supply, water quality, and we also update um, uh, data or something like that. So uh, I think uh, the sanitation working group is a good platform for, for us to share uh, everything about the sanitation and water supply. Thank you. Okay, excellent, excellent. So we, we finally... Uh Yes, uh, thank you very much, our colleague from Vietnam. Now, uh, we now have our colleague from uh, Tanzania who's with us, Dr. Massa. Now, uh, you did something that was quite intriguing and interesting, I think, uh, which is that in, in the National Sanitation Information System in Tanzania, the reporting rate has increased tremendously, and you are at currently around 92% of reporting, so which is an excellent figure by all means. So, uh, Dr. Massa, would you please uh, tell us uh, briefly about how you managed to get such a uh, such a high uptake of the information system? Dr. Massa? Hello, hello. Yes, we can we can hear hello. you. Go ahead. Okay, we actually managed to increase the reporting rate so far because we have advocated for all districts not to report through anywhere. Every district should now report through this system. If we don't report through this system, it means we are not going to report your data. So in so advocating, every district is making sure that he is reporting through this system. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Dr. Massa, uh, for a very clear answer. Now, if we, if there are no other co uh, comments or questions from uh, uh, our colleagues to their peers uh, in other places, then. Uh, maybe we should start wrapping up because we're at one hour and a half of this this conversation. So another minute, uh, would anyone like to make an intervention or ask a question uh, before we start wrapping up? Hi. Hello, Sitali. Yes. Okay, from the Nigeria team, um, we just want to give an update of what... Um, the what UNICEF and the government has been working on using the WASH norm data and WASHIMS. So there are two interventions called, um, one is called the WASH account, 
And um, the second one is called Intervention Profiling of States. So basically, the WASH account, um, the WASH account is based on good examples from the health sector where we will be able to answer pertinent questions such as um, what is the total expenditure in the sector, how are funds being distributed between various WASH services, expenditure types, who pays for WASH services, which entities are, are the main channels of WASH funding. So this WASH account is going to help increase transparency on funding in the WASH sector. It's going to also help us um, track expenditures across time. Also going to help us monitor allocation of funding and monitor the implementation of, of commitments from partners. So right now, this the WASH account is currently in the planning phase with the ministry. Um, and it's when when it's concluded, it's going to be embedded within the WASHIMS website. So when you go in, you can see, okay, this is how much is going into the water sector. This is how much is going into sanitation. This is how much is going into um, hygiene. This is how much is being um, um, spent by households and how much is being spent by NGOs or partners. So this is really good in helping us um, advocate for more funding within the sector. And this is, we are current, currently working on it. The, all the data analysis is being done and um, the technical group is going to be formed by the end of this week. And then um, on intervention profiling, this is just um, a model of, um, it presents a more refined and transparent, or let's say systematic method for targeting states in Nigeria for watch services. So we have 36 states in Nigeria and um, usually um, the government or partners, they use maybe the prevalence of poor watch services. You can get these prevalence figures from uh, let's say the mix or the wash norm, and they, they, you might use this for for targeting states for interventions. But you, we have to take into account the population of each state, because we have very large states such as Kano and Lagos, which have up to three million or two million people within those states. So they might have a low prevalence, but they are because of the population in population terms, the, they have a high burden of of poor wash services. So. We've, um, we went, we delved deeper into the WASHNOM data and we, we um, developed a, an intervention profiling model which takes into account both the burden of need for WASH services of a state as well as the state's pre prevalence on poor WASH. So WASH packages are designed based on multiple criteria relevant to the, let's say, any policymaker or practitioner that wants to fund, well, has a, a certain amount of money and wants to fund states. So then states are now systematically compared and prioritized on um, for a specified um, wash um, package. And then states can then be selected based on their ranking. So this model is also, we, are, we, are, we have actually developed it, so it, we are just in the process of putting it on the WASHIMS website. So let's say you have maybe $10 million and you want to invest in, and you just don't know the states to invest in in Nigeria. So you just go into the WASHIMS website, you put in your, your budget, you put in um, the package you want. Maybe let's say you want a, sanitation package, and ending of def defecation package, a sustainability package, you put that in that that's what you want. And then you get a ranking of all 36 states, and you see the, one, the ones that are the most prioritized and the ones that are least prioritized. So this is, this is um, these are just the two, the two models that we just wanted to tell you about, and we should be, we should be able to get it on the Washington website, website by, let's say, September. So this is, uh, that's it. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much for this, this very inspiring note on uh, how the washrooms can be used uh, in order to advocate for the sector and uh, to target funding in the areas where uh, it is it is most needed. Now, uh, with, with these excellent and very clear words from our colleagues in Nigeria, I would like to wrap up because we're at one hour and 33 minutes of the conversation. So, uh, uh, in conclusion, a couple of uh, observations. One uh, is that uh, all of these slides will be shared with you uh, and will be disseminated widely so that uh, you can access them. Now, uh, just as a reminder, they will contain uh, the list of uh, some of the resources that, 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 I, uh, that I shared and uh, the country interventions. So that's one, uh, one of the remarks. Another thing is that uh, in this conversation, we've had uh, colleagues from at least uh, nine countries, so uh, at least uh, four in Asia and at least five in Africa, uh, and there are more. And uh, interestingly, we've had uh, uh, colleagues from governments, from the UNICEF, from the private sector, CSOs, water aid, etc. So thank you very much to all of you for, uh, for this variety, uh, not only geographically, but also uh, linguistically, because there was, uh, it, we got to see the, the rich variety of accents when we all speak English. 
which is excellent. Uh, now we had uh, these four interventions and, and the, the, the questions and the discussions, they've helped us to understand about the implementation and, uh, of the, the MIS, uh, including how it is funded, uh, the uptake by the stakeholders, the stakeholders and how to get and nobody can use the MIS, and uh, finally on uh, the use for decision making, including how to advocate for the sector and how to target uh, such funding as is made available for the sector. So we've, we've run uh, the, the three uh, important points of implementation, of uh, uptake and of the use. Now, uh, if uh, then there have been questions uh, from Bhutan to Nigeria, from Cambodia to Vietnam. Uh, so uh, if you are interested in learning more about any particular experience uh, that was presented today, uh, I, I invite you to please tell us here on, on this chat or by email to any of us uh, what country you would like to learn more about and then we would put you in touch with them and facilitate uh, uh, deeper conversations between, between countries. And finally, uh, my last remark before, before ending is that uh, we, we, will be, uh, we will be writing uh, uh, experiences on MIS in the form of a briefing paper uh, which is which I will be leading on uh, from the Secretariat's uh, side and uh, we would be interested in in getting your uh, inputs for this briefing paper. So I invite uh, you to please tell us if you would be interested in that as, as well in helping us there uh, and with that I think we can bring this conversation to a close. Uh, bravo to all the presenters and thank you very much to uh, all the learners and all the teachers who were here with us. So, uh, thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of this conversation. Thank you.